Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning given us, Lord God. Thank you for being in the midst of us, Lord. We worship you, we glorify you, we honor you, Lord. Blessed be your name. There's nothing that can be compared to you, Master, as you are the Heavenly Father, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. God Almighty, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Help us to worship you in the greatest of your holiness, Lord. Help us to worship you in the greatest of your glory and honor and praise. Uh, as we study from your word, speak to us, Holy Spirit, and help us to apply it in our practical life, Lord. We ask you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, we've, been, uh, we've been doing the discipleship series, and uh, last week we talked about uh, Christian maturity. We finished that part, and then we moved on to uh, define who are we, or who am I, or what is our identity. And uh, as part of it, uh, we were talking about the first point, who am I, what is our identity. And before that, uh, I talked about how once we are saved, we are uh, uh, like, like a human being, like the stages in the life of a human being. We are a baby, then we mature to uh, a child or an infant, then a young adult and then a spiritual uh, or a parent where we make disciples. And then we defined what Christian maturity is. We defined maturity in a worldly perspective is to become independent, but maturity in a Christian perspective, in a biblical perspective, is to become more dependent on Jesus Christ. And that is the main difference between uh, maturity in a worldly perspective and maturity in a biblical perspective. So becoming more identi being, becoming identified more with Jesus Christ, and that is what Christian maturity is about. And then we talked about the two main uh, essentials or two uh, the two significant points uh, in Christian maturity. That is, one is first point was a radical reordering of priorities. Do our priorities change once we become saved? Once we become United with Christ, what is our priority? Priority, Is it still the past priorities which we gave importance to? Do we give importance, is our first priority our work or our busy schedules, our family, our friends, our school, or whatever we gave priority before becoming saved, is it still our uh, primary priorities? Or once becoming saved, is our first priority God? Is our first priority the relationship with God? So that's what I told in the first point. And the second point was uh, not my will, but your will be done. God's will is at, 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 the, at, the, heart of our, at the heart of Christian maturity is let Lord's will be done. As we heard yesterday from the message, his will should be done and not our will. And then we moved on to, we moved on to our identity, which is, who am I? And I mentioned four points as part of it. The first point was, I am a new creation. Second point was, I am no longer a slave to sin. Third was, I am free. And fourth was, I am more than a conqueror in Christ. So once we become saved, once we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we are a new creation. And as shown in the presentation, we... Uh, talked a little bit about 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, where that verse we see in the Bible, once we become saved, once we are in Christ, I mean, He is a new creation, and it is, not a, it is not a reordering, or it is not a reorganizing of an old creation. We are completely new. The Greek word kainos means completely fresh, completely pure, I mean, newly made and pure. So that kainos that the word the meaning of that word kainos is. So once we become saved, we are a new creation, and the old has passed away. And in five seventeen it says, "The old has passed away; behold, the new has come." So the newness has covered us. We are dressed by the righteousness of Christ, or Christ's righteousness has covered us. So once we are covered by the righteousness of Christ. Then the old, then our old life has no relationship with us, with us, or the old priorities, our old life. Namada pareya jivida thine, namada ipudiya jivida mai to oru bandho illa. Karanam, it's because we are in Christ. 
we are in Christ. And as part of being in Christ, we are a new creation. So Paul, throughout the epistles of Paul, we, uh, Paul has these different terms, united to Christ, uh, uh, baptized to Christ, in Christ. Paul, all, Paul uses all these phrases to denote, to mention about our new relationship with Christ, which is we are a new creation and we have a love relationship with Jesus Christ. We have a love relationship with God. And as part of that love, we are, to grat we are not to gratify the desires of the flesh, but we have to walk in the newness of life. So this new creation, many a times we, uh, we take it for granted. Ah, oh, yeah, we are a new creation. Uh, we left our old ways. But, but seriously speaking, to be very frank, we still go back to our old ways. And that's the primary reason is because we are not yet taken up. We are not yet glorified. So till that point, we still, that, that flesh has that attraction towards sin. And just because of that, the flesh always tells us in our inner mind, just do sin, just, just go for that. But many a times, against or to stand opposed against us is very hard because that's why we always talk about being filled in the Spirit. Unless we are being filled in the Spirit, it's always hard to oppose or it's hard to stand against the fleshly desires or bodily desires. So, other continuous process of being filled in the Spirit. In Pentecostal theology, we talk about baptism in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, uh, prophecy, interpretation of the tongues, and that's all needed. daily process being filled in the Spirit. Other personal relationship, other corporate, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, it's not an experience that you just receive from the church. That you only receive when we have a personal relationship with Jesus. Being filled in the Spirit, it is, a, it is something or it is a process that we need to experience daily. Daily or when I say daily, daily in Pora. Telba daily, Cheda Pola, Namaka, Patata, Avastal on the Tonda. But Avale, you have a personal prayer with God, right? The Avale, the prayer, Chalapam, whichever I can Nikitulu, whichever I am a pin or a temptation, even the Mladil Vino. Upon it, it is a it is a renewing process. It is a renewal that needs to happen in our mind every second. I don't know the time frame. Marco the Baram, but the Chalap every second, Derkin Chalap every minute, Derkim, Chalaka and Dumun the Monikura Kanikim, Pinanga Vino. Upon it depends upon each person. Oro Victigulum Engana Pabathod, Edabadan and Sirikim. Elavim, Namalam, we are all attracted, we are all our flesh is all attracted to sin. So just understand one thing, being filled in the Spirit is not a one-time process. Being filled in the Spirit it ha needs to happen daily, needs to happen uh, continuously, daily or every one hour, every two hours. That depends on uh, how your relationship with God, that you need to decide. I cannot tell that, but I, I can tell one thing, you need to be filled in the Spirit continuously. You need that renewal of your mind needs to happen progressively. And it has to happen progressively. progressively. What I mean by that is, it, as I mentioned in the previous classes, our Christian life is an upward curve. So, our mentality change. Just because Christ has commanded, that's what I said, out of our reverence for God, out of our love for God. So new creation, the Varimbam number priorities are changing in Oppam, along with changing our priorities, along with reordering our priorities, what the change that needs to happen is in our attitude. That change that needs to happen in our character, our behavior, our mentality, our behavior towards our fellow beings, our behavior towards our fellow brothers, our fellow sisters, our attitude towards the world, our attitude towards the world, our attitude towards the God. Upam, it's a very uh, uh, it's a class that needs to be taken in depth, so I'm just touching the boundary limits of that. If there's no point in saying that we are a new creation. So other than I whole gospel silum, epistles, commands when Paul says we are a new creation, when Christ talks about the kingdom of God, we being the participants in the kingdom and the 
അതൊരു യു ടേൺ ഒരു മെറ്റനോയ ഒരെങ്കിൽ ഒരു റിപ്പൻഡൻസ് എന്നൊക്കെ പറയുമ്പം വെൻ വി റിപ്പെൻഡ് വി ഹാവ് ടു ജെനുവൻലി റിപ്പെൻഡ് വി ജെനുവൻലി വി ഷുഡ് ജെനുവൻലി റിപ്പെൻഡ് ഓഫ് അവർ സെൻസ് and then there needs to be a strong urge in us inside us that okay we don't need to go back we don't want to go back to that sinful life we don't need to go back we don't we shouldn't go back to that oldness of life our urge undengil ad continuously when it grows then we will reach that parent or spiritual parent level which i mentioned in the previous class where we can make disciples where we are completely christ centered you know all we think about all we all what we do in our life is about what christ does or if christ be jeevichirundirundengil how would he walk he he proved that in the three and a half years he was here he was here in the earth right 2000 years back so our pattern follow cheyengil as i said we need to be filled in the holy spirit roman 6 il oru phrase and uh, it, it has made me think uh, when i studied romans back in the days Romans 6 ile parayunnundu shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase and this is a verse that is being misinterpreted by many preachers karanam ee easy believism allengil free grace hyper grace okke prasangikkunna uthiri per undu appo avari vaakyam vechittu ah we will be abound in more and more grace so paavam cheyidile cheyidalum kolappalle it's okay to sin and avaru paavam cheyidittu avaru one zone le vaakyam edukkum അവൻ്റെ രക്തം സകല പാപം പോക്കി നമ്മെ ശുദ്ധീകരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പം പാപം ചെയ്യാൻ ഒരു വേഴ്സ് ഉണ്ട് പാപം ചെയ്തിട്ട് ഫോർ ഗിവിനെസ് തരാൻ ഒരു വേഴ്സ് ഉണ്ട് പിന്നെന്തോ വേണം സോ ദാറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് ഹൗ വി ഷുഡ് സ്റ്റഡി ദ ബൈബിൾ ആസ് ഐ സെഡ് ബിഫോർ വി ഹാവ് ടു ബാലൻസ് വേഴ്സസ് അപ്പം അതിൻ്റെ ദ വേഴ്സസ് ബിഫോർ ദാറ്റ് ആൻഡ് വേഴ്സസ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ദാറ്റ് പഠിക്കുമ്പോൾ വി ക്യാൻ സീ വൺ തിങ് ആർ വി ടു കണ്ടിന്യൂ ഇൻ സിൻ ദാറ്റ് ഗ്രേസ് മേ അബൌണ്ട് സെക്കൻഡ് വേഴ്സ് പറയുന്നുണ്ട് ബൈ നോ മീൻസ് നോട്ട് അറ്റ് ഓൾ അപ്പം മെനി ടൈംസ് ദീസ് പ്രീച്ചേഴ്സ് അത് പറയത്തില്ല കാരണം അവർക്ക് അവരുടെ തിയോളജിയെ സാറ്റിസ്ഫൈ ചെയ്യുന്ന വേഴ്സസ് അവരങ്ങ് കംപ്ലീറ്റ്ലി അങ്ങ് അവോയ്ഡ് ചെയ്യും സോ വൺ വി വെൻ വി സ്റ്റഡി വി ഹാവ് ടു സ്റ്റഡി ദിസ് ഇസ് ദ ഹോൾ കൗൺസിൽ ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് യു കെ നോട്ട് ചെറി പിക് വേഴ്സസ് ടു സാറ്റിസ്ഫൈ യുവർ തിയോളജി ഓർ സാറ്റിസ്ഫൈ യുവർ കൺവിക്ഷൻസ് സോ പൗലോസ് പറയുന്ന വാട്ട് ഷാൽ വി സേ ദെൻ ആർ വി ടു കണ്ടിന്യൂ ഇൻ സെൻ ദാറ്റ് ഗ്രേസ് മേ അബൌണ്ട് ബൈ നോ മീൻസ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഈ സേസ് ഹൗ ക്യാൻ വി ഹു ഡൈ ടു സെൻ സ്റ്റിൽ ലിവ് ഇൻ ഇറ്റ് പാപത്തോട് നമ്മളെ മരിച്ചു ഞാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞ പ്രാവശ്യം കഴിഞ്ഞ ആഴ്ച പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ വി ആർ ഡെറ്റ് ടു സിൻ ആൻഡ് വി ആർ അലൈഫ് ഇൻ ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് വി ആർ അലൈഫ് ടു ഗോഡ് ഇൻ ക്രൈസ്റ്റ് ജീസസ് സോ വൺസ് വി ആർ ഡെറ്റ് ടു സിൻ ഗ്രേസ് ദൈവം തരും ഗ്രേസ് തരത്തില്ല എന്നല്ല പറയുന്നത് പക്ഷേ ഗ്രേസ് തരുന്നതിന് അഡ്വാൻറ്റേജ് എടുത്തിട്ട് യു യു ഡോണ്ട് ഗോ സെൻഡിങ് ദാറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് ഹൗ യു ബിഹേവ് ആസ് എ ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ ദാറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് ഹൗ യു ബിഹേവ് ആസ് എ ന്യൂ ക്രിയേഷൻ വെൻ യു ആർ എ ന്യൂ ക്രിയേഷൻ God has given you that qualification to be a new creation and God has covered you in the righteousness of Christ then as a responsibility responsibility in the rainbow not don't think as an obligation I mean, I'll mention it uh, in the coming classes it's not an obligation it's not a responsibility out of a requirement it is a requirement aanannu vicharichu don't behave or don't express the christian attitude or the christian character it should develop from our reverence for god it should develop many times when i've preached here before i told this uh, our relationship and when it's based out of love right when you are in love with someone eh? when you are in when you love a person genuinely pinna avare pore karyam if they ask you to do something you don't do it as a requirement or you don't do it just to please them right that's not how you do that's not how you act towards them so when you love a person and if a person demands or if a person ask you if a person request you something or for say if they command you to do something it's out of their genuine love that you do something right whatever it may be i don't want to go to any examples so that is the same our worldly spouse in order or a friend or a family or whoever that is if we express that much uh, genuinity in our relationship with the person on earth how much more genuine should be when we are in a relationship with our father right when we are in relationship with our savior when we are in relationship with the spirit that has been filled inside us so adu nammal eppozhum aa or comparison eppozhum manasil we should have that in our mind if we are genuine to a person if we genuinely express our feelings if we genuinely express our relationship to a person on earth whether be it spouse whether be it your friend your best friend close friend family parent colleague whoever that may be 
if you really love that person, if you, are in a, if you have an intimate relationship with that person, how much genuine will you be? You will be genuine. Other, that defines your relationship. Genuinity, lingual, if you're not real, if you're wearing a mask, Last week, I mean, it's a tamasha, but last week I told, right, we should not wear mask of righteousness and uh, mask of uh, pride and all. Bindhani chuma tamasha kya varin. Sirle mask kya varin. Yana ha mask, namal idna COVID mask ne vetti yalla varin. What I was, what I was talking about is, we, uh, I, I mean, she know what I told and she was just joking around. So, what, what I was mentioning or what I was telling is, uh, as believers, as church going people, we all have this, uh, we all have this covering, not this mask, not the literal mask, but we all show it in our face, in our attitudes, in our behavior. Sometimes we act to be humble. We act to be very humble. Oh, I'm a bow, I'm a huge word. I'm going to attitude. I am nothing. I am a poor man. 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 But they, when they act, when they talk to you, they will act like you. They are very, they are a dust. They are a poor man. Uh, uh, and I'm not judging people, but I'm just uh, mentioning a couple of characters that, is being, that are being exhibited by people in the church. So some act to be humble. Some act to be self-righteous. I am right. What I tell is right. Whatever you tell. I am right. Our own hundred percent radio rolling and some search on the gospel, nepetim, walking on a particular pine they are very much studied about the Bible and gospel, and they don't have a, a ear to listen. Uh, James, uh, epistle of James, will clear it about how we should behave with such kind of people or how we should behave. We, we should carry ourselves as a new creation, as a Christian. So, but we wear all this mask, right? We wear this mask of humbleness, humility, we wear this mask of pride. Pride, genuine pride They act, uh, they have this pride inside them, but they act uh, outside, externally they act as humble people. So uh, these are all different kinds of masks that Christians wear. I'm not talking about non-Christians. Once you become a new creation, once you are uh, convinced yourself inside your mind that you are a Christian, Still, if you wear all this mask of right, self-righteousness or judgmentalism or pride or greed or humility, different kinds of masks, uh, I'm not just talking about our uh, not church, entire the church in the world, the holy Catholic church, the holy universal church, whether whichever denomination it be, that's, uh, that's what the word of God asks us to do. We new creation, we mask we should be genuine. We should be real. That's what I was telling about the relationship. That's why I was mentioning about the relationship. Once you are in a relationship with God, once you are a new creation, the old has passed away and the new has come. And that's why Paul exhorts in Ephesians, we are to walk in the newness of life. Unless we walk in the newness of life, we cannot experience that the love in, the, love in our relationship. We need to experience the love in our relationship with Christ. If we are not genuine, we cannot experience the love in our relationship with God. Last week, in Guthri, I was So last week, uh, so I graduated from, I graduated from uh, my college, b I did in 2006. So I had a lot of friends. And one of the friends, after 16 years, contacted me on Facebook. He, he was, we used to talk, we were batchmates. To my surprise, uh, uh, he called me on Facebook Messenger. He called me and says, said, Cyril, he's in Chicago. And he was in Kuwait for many years. He was working as an engineer in Kuwait. He recently moved to Illinois. And he calls me on Facebook Messenger and says, Cyril, I was listening to your Bikka Bible study on YouTube. I was like, wow. I was listening to the, your Christian maturity Bible study on Facebook. And he was asking me a lot of questions. And he's a Catholic, so he has. No, I mean, he he's saved actually. I mean, Pashe Pulli Catholic Church on the bone. He wants to get out of Catholic Church, but because of all his family pressure, his wife, his uh, father, mother, all of them Catholic Church on the bone. So he's pressured to go to Catholic Church. And then he was asking me a lot of questions. Sir, how can I be become more mature in I mean, 
in my life with Christ? How do I get out of sin? How can I, how should I, I walk in, walk as a Christian? He is, and he is in the chayanda, but he is agro on the chayanda, no shayanda, no shayanda, no shayanda. He was asking me all this question, and your Bible study has been very benefiting. Um, uh, but our Bible study listened to you know, on the, online. That, that, was to, was, that was to my surprise very much, and I was so happy. And I talked to him, and we'll, I said, we'll talk in the coming weeks about it. And I will personally talk to him also. So uh, I just want to mention for our encouragement. So what I was telling is, being a new creation demands a change in our character. Being a new creation demands a change in our attitude. Being a new creation demands a change in our behavior, character, and attitude towards God and towards people. So, Galatians 5.13, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. As I said before, our change in character, behavior, attitude results in a change in how we serve one another how we serve others, how we serve our brothers and sisters. So that is an attitude we all need to have, to serve. How to urge, how to either, we should have it. I need to serve my brother, I need to serve my sister. Don't take it as a requirement. Don't take it as a requirement to satisfy or to fulfill. But rather than taking it as a requirement, use it as a responsibility. Use it as something that we, you need to do wholeheartedly. Requirement in the meet team and the wholeheartedly Allah. That's not how we do many things, whether it's at work or our house. But there are certain requirements that are set before us. Grocery medicure. Sometimes it is a requirement. Just one simple example. Requirements requirements we So, uh, requirements we Many times, That's not how we should conduct our Christian character. Exhibiting Christian character, exhibiting acts of love should be out of our reverence to God. And that moves on to the second point. I'm no longer a slave to sin. And that's why I, I wanted to give you an outline of what is the difference between a slave and a child. So I was reading uh, some of the Jewish books, some Jewish articles. I wanted to know really how a slave meant in Israel. What did a slave mean to people in ancient uh, Jewish culture? So Jewish culture, in ancient Jewish culture, being a slave, being a slave in the world, it was a, no one would desire to be a slave. Our pathetic life uh, they led. They led a very pathetic life in ancient Israel, being a slave. But, I, I, but to, be, uh, uh, to be honest with scripture, scripture is clear right to say that in many verses, slavery condone condoned, slavery encouraged. But right now, uh, civil rights movement, we know the history of it. So still people are being treated as slaves. We know that. And I don't want to go into the details of it. And that is very wrong. None of us should be treated as slaves. And uh, we have uh, freedom in this country. We have freedom in the world. But when I was looking in the ancient uh, Roman culture, that was part of that culture. That was part of that society, being a slave. And they, masters, owned slaves. So the first point I was mentioning, uh, I mentioned there, slaves may perform duties, right? Slaves, because of that's what, that's the, that's what is demanded from them. That's the requirement of them. That's what I was mentioning before. They did it as a requirement. Wholeheartedly, since their, master, since their masters required of them to perform certain responsibilities, perform certain duties, they had to do it. They would have to bear the punishment. So slaves may perform duties, but as when uh, Christ saved us, he adopted us as child, right? We read that in Romans chapter 8, 14 to 17. 
So I'll read that and then we'll come back to it. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 17, to understand adoption. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. So the, whole, the goal of adoption is mentioned in verse 17. We may also be glorified with him. And even the Elam goal on the parayana, the justification Elam, sanctification Elam, uh, adoption Elam, then there are different terminologies we use uh, to proclaim, to preach the gospel. Then the, the, the whole point of it is glorification. When Christ comes, Christ glorifies us. So ancient Israel, for ancient Jewish culture, the slave in the, as I said, life was very pathetic. He had to obey what the master demands of him. And masters treated them very, uh, in a, uh, I cannot even mention how they treated their slaves. Very bad. It was a, a, a worse condition that they had to go through. But Paul is saying as adopted children, we don't need to fall back into fear. But Paul is saying we have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. And that is the privilege each one of us has received. We were slaves to sin. And if you read Romans 7, we read about it. We were slaves to sin in our previous life. Past tense, we were slaves to sin. Present, we are children of God. We know that song, right? I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. We were slaves to fear. And as part of that fear, I mean, we were slaves to sin. As part of that sin, fear was there. Punishment was there. Condemnation was there. But when we were freed by Christ Jesus at the cross, he transformed our status from slaves to children. And that is, a, that is a complete transformation of a human being from sin to freedom. From sin to freedom. And that transformation was that we are no more a slave to sin, but we are free in Christ. So as a slave... Uh, a, a Jewish person or an, a person living in Israel in Roman culture had to perform responsibilities and they obeyed as an obligation, as a requirement, not with love, not with respect. Of course, I mean, respect, there was, to an extent, respect was there, but I'm talking about a wholehearted reverence, a wholehearted respect, a wholehearted love, a wholehearted gladness or joy. That's not how they obeyed their masters. But we obey our God. We obey our Father. We obey our Creator with gladness. When I say we, a child, a new creation, obeys God with gladness, with joy. We exhibit that joy in our acts. We exhibit that joy in our works. We exhibit that joy in our behavior with others. We exhibit that joy and gladness in our character. We exhibit that joy in our attitude, our mentality, right? That re once, that, once that renewal of our mind happens, when we obey the scripture, when we obey the word, when we obey what Christ has commanded us to do, when we obey what apostles has commanded us through the epistles, we obey wholeheartedly. And that is an attitude that we need to exhibit. All of us need to exhibit obeying with joy, obeying with gladness. Third point, a slave, a slave is motivated by fear. He's motivated by punishment. A punishment very well low in North obey They don't obey, as I said, wholeheartedly. Because of the after effects, they may get scolding or beatings. And they might get punished severely by their master. That's how a slave obeys a master. But as children of God, as a child of God, we obey because of our relationship with God. We obey because of the love relationship we have with God the Father. We obey because of our love. Ah, other, other, that's inverted commas. Love to God. Love with Christ. The love relationship. And we know, uh, we heard about uh, Peter, uh, God, Christ asking Peter about the agape love. Unconditional love. Christ expressed it. He expressed unconditional love. Selfless love on the cross. 
And that is what he expects from us back. Loving God and loving people. I mean, logo loving God, loving people. Agape love. Phileo love, storge love. Agape love means unconditional love, selfless love. So we should be motivated by, by Christ himself. Because Christ set an example while he lived on this earth. He didn't live in the heavens and say, okay, here's some commands, just go and obey. Please me. Christ came to this world. He proved how to live as a Christian. He proved how to live with the relationship with Father. And so we see many instances where Son, even though equal with the Father, we heard yesterday, equal with the Father, He submitted, right? He submitted to the will of God, the Father. So Christ came to this world. He proved how to live on this earth. So that is our motivation. Our motivation is not a Bible teacher. Our motivation is not a celebrity pastor. Our motivation is not a preacher that whom we listen every day. Our motivation is Jesus Christ. And that is the standard that has been set for each one of us. That is why Hebrews 12 says, setting a goal to run a race, fixing our eyes towards Jesus. It's Christ Jesus at the finishing point. It's not your celebrity pastor who is there. It's not your favorite preacher. It's not your favorite Bible teacher. It's not your favorite worship leader that's in the finishing point. Who stands at the finishing point? Jesus Christ. Christ is standing there at the finishing point. So when you start your race in this world, when you start your race with Christ, your both eyes should be fixed on Jesus Christ. There might be encouragements. There might be discouragements. Take the encouragements. Leave the discouragements. That's all good. But don't get carried away by your encouragements. That's something which we need to... It's very hard living in this world to live like that. But yes, from your fellow brothers and sisters, you get encouragements. And from some, you get discouragements. Don't get carried away by your encouragements. But fix your both eyes on Jesus Christ. Leave the discouragements and set your race. Run your race by fixing your eyes. If you fix your eyes on Jesus till you reach the finishing point, yes, you will be glorified. But there are chances that you can be left, left behind. There are chances that you can, you, that there are chances, there are possibilities, there are instances that may pull you back from running the race successfully, from finishing the race. And that's why I said, if you fix your eyes on Jesus till the finishing point, you will be able to finish the race. And the fourth point, a slave attitude is, what am I required to do, as I mentioned? It's a requirement. See, your attitude is like that. Your attitude is in a way that, oh, there's more things to do for me. I need to do it. Uh, uh, you know that, uh, hmm. That, that's, your, that's the mentality. That's an attitude you have as a slave. But as a child of God, what more can I do? I read, because he obeys with joy and gladness, right? He obeys with joy and gladness. A child of God is motivated by Christ, by his or her, her relationship with God. So when you're motivated by God, when you're motivated by the relationship with God, then your attitude will be, what more can I do for God? What more can I do as a new creation? What more can I do as a person who is no more a slave? Because Christ has redeemed us. Christ has delivered me from darkness. Christ has delivered me from sin. Christ took the pain. He suffered for me at the cross of Calvary to deliver me from the pain of sickness, from the pain of sin, from the pain of fear, from the pain of distress, from the pain of depression, from the pain of frustrations. What, what are we doing? We are not doing nothing, right? We are doing nothing. We are engaged in our work schedules. And that's all part of the responsibilities we have, to, we have towards our family and all. That's, that, I'm not negating all that. But even in midst of this, do we have an attitude of worship? Do we have an attitude of exhibiting a character which Christ displayed while he was on earth? Do we have that love towards others? Do we serve one another in love? Or do we serve one another as a requirement of the Bible? If we serve one another as a requirement of a Bible or a requirement of the scripture, 
That's not genuine. That's not a genuine love that we are exhibiting. So our attitude, the attitude sh we should have within us is, what more can I do for God? What, can, what more can I do for the, as a bride of Christ? We are all part of the bride of Christ, right? Manavati sabeda angangala namalalayari. And we are all members of the body of Christ. So being a part of a body of Christ, we know if, if a body, if a, a part of body stops working, that body cannot, functionally, cannot function fully. That body cannot function completely. So don't, so what, whatever we do, whatever uh, the character we exhibit, the character we display in our life here on earth, that character should, that, that should, that character should exhibit love. Love should be the foundation of our character. Love should be the foundation of our attitude, our mentality. And we should have an attitude of what more can I do instead of what am I required to do. Romans 6, 6 says, We know that the person we used to be was crucified with him to put an end to sin in our bodies. Because of this, we are no longer slaves to sin, as I said before. And in verse 22 of Romans 6, Paul says, Now you have been freed from sin and have become God's slaves. So slaves to sin are no slaves to God and the Barnal uh, slaves to God is equal to a child of God. We are free in Christ. We are we we were transformed from a slave to sin to be a slave to God slave to God. And as slaves of God, these are not all requirements. God has freed us from sin. We have freedom in Christ. That's my third point, which I will take in the next class. We have true freedom in Christ, and that true freedom is not, to, is not the freedom to sin. Our master gives certain commands in, this, in the gospel. The, epistle, the apostles give certain commands in the epistles so that we can carry out, we can carry out those commands, we can obey those commands wholeheartedly, with love, with no fear. Karam, he has adopted us, God, Christ has adopted us as his sons and daughters, and that is a privilege that we got. We didn't, he didn't have to do that. He didn't, Israel, we didn't have any relationship with Israel. And that's what we read in Romans 11. He grafted onto us. He elected us. He predestined us. He made us his children so that we could experience that relationship and we could carry out the commands wholeheartedly in love. So love defines our relationship with God. Love defines the relationship with our fellow beings. Love defines the relationship with our brothers and sisters. And that agape love is something that we have to exhibit as a new creation since we are no more a slave to sin, but we are slaves to God. We are free in Christ and we are slaves to righteousness. Romans uh, 6, we are slaves to righteousness. In Romans 6, there is another verse, the ending part of Romans 6, 22. But now that you have been set free from sin and become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification or holiness and its end, eternal life. So, the whole purpose, as I mentioned, eternal life. The goal of our running race, the goal of us running in this race is eternal life. That should be our, that should be our motivation. That should be our goal. Our goal is not the material things that we receive on earth. Our goal is not the encouragements that we receive on earth. Our goal is not the rewards we get while we live on this earth. Yes, we may get that. We may not get that. There's no guarantee for that. But our goal is eternal life. Everlasting life. Abundant life is our goal to be a disciple. And as a new, cre as new creation, the fruit you get leads to holiness and it's a holiness is a fruit of being slave to god holiness is a fruit of being free holiness is a fruit of being a child of god that's a bonus that you get you get to exhibit the relationship you get to exhibit love to one another you get to exhibit and you get to exhibit the character of god in your life we read in isaiah 6 holy 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 is god and that is our standard. That is our standard. Holiness is our standard. Sanctification is our standard. And as a responsible Christian, as a responsible believer, believer let us have these four attitudes. 
let us act out of reverence to god let us obey the commands with joy and gladness let us be motivated by the relationship with god let us be motivated by christ himself and let us have an attitude of not what am i required to do but what more can i do to god let's bow our heads heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful morning given us lord god lord thank you for the for giving us the privilege to be free in you thank you for being giving us the privilege to be a child of god lord you are you are so gracious to us lord to make us your children lord to adopt you to adopt us as your children we give you all the glory honor and praise lord we worship you help us to worship you wholeheartedly lord help us to obey the commandments lord with gladness and joy lord we pray for the rest of the worship service lord speak to us holy spirit thank you for being in the midst of us in jesus christ name we pray amen